Well, good morning and good afternoon, uh, members and guests of the Cybersecurity Collaborative. It's very nice to have you here uh, as we talk about uh, the work of the task force, the Security Awareness and Education Practices Task Force, who developed the CISO Guide for Effective Security Awareness and Education uh, Practices. I'm Tom Skura. Uh, I'm the VP of Content and Programs for the Cybersecurity Collaborative. I'll be moderating uh, this session today. Just a few housekeeping uh, uh, rules. Uh, no one's on speaker, but if you do have questions, please enter them in the Q&A box. We will uh, attempt to get to them all at the end of the presentation. And uh, uh, just a reminder, uh, this qualifies for a CPE if you have certifications. Certainly contact us uh, and we can uh, validate uh, that, that you attended from the CPE side of things. So uh, today, uh, joining me, we have a, a, a great cast of members uh, of the team and our executive sponsor team member. Um, I'll, I'll introduce first Ben Coral, Vice President of Cybersecurity of the Coats Group. And Ben, I just have to say, has is, is just been a real uh, stalwart member of the uh, collaborative on the number of teams and uh, very active contributors. So Ben, maybe you want to just say something about Coates and yourself, and then I'll introduce the other panelists. No, oh, absolutely. Uh, happy to be here. Always happy to, to jump on these task force because I learned so, so much uh, from the other members, from, from, from the team members, uh, the different experiences that are out there. So uh, as the slide says, Ben Coral, I am the head of cybersecurity for Coates. Uh, for those who haven't heard of Coates, it's an industrial thread manufacturer. Uh, and uh, just, I've had the pleasure of leading the cyber team there for nearly five years. Uh, well, great, Ben. As always, uh, glad to have you sponsoring this team and, and be a, a, an active participant on so many different teams. So next, I'd like to introduce Andy Kittleson from Rockwell Automation. Andy has uh, been a very big inspiration on this team and provided some um, excellent ideas and food for thought on how to make these things more engaging. Some of her ideas I wish I had incorporated before I developed this presentation. But Andy, why don't you tell us a little bit about Rockwell and yourself, if you would. Thanks, Tom. Um, Rockwell Automation located in uh, headquarters, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We are a global manufacturing company. I've been managing the Global Security Training and Awareness Program for five years. Um, it will be five years in June. Eat, sleep, and breathe the training awareness element of security, and I'm really happy to be here. So thanks, Tom. And we're glad to have you here, too. And next, I'll introduce Mike Kraft uh, from Vermeer. Mike, uh, as always, you've been a great member on the team. Uh, thanks for joining today. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I'm uh, Mike Kraft. I'm in charge of cybersecurity for Vermeer Corporation. We also are a manufacturing company. Uh, we manufacture industrial and agricultural machines. And my role is to sit, the training piece is about maybe 10% of, of what I do. And uh, you really, uh, I know as we've talked, really uh, broaden that role and, and made it more effective over the years, starting starting out with very little, I, I guess, and really, really expanding it and making it a very active uh, part of the company. So thanks, Mike, for that. And then finally, uh, Bernadette Ortiz, unfortunately, uh, from Booz Allen, uh, was, was ill today and could not make it, uh, but she's been a terrific member of the team and has contributed some, some uh, slides as well that we'll go over today. And lastly, I'd like to introduce Joe Pokrovsky from One Main Financial. Um, Joe's been a, 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 an absolutely terrific member and really has introduced some uh, really uh, unique ideas in terms of metrics and uh, human scorecards into the thinking and uh, discussions of these teams. So Joe, tell us a little bit about uh, One Main and, uh, and yourself, please. Yeah, yeah, I uh, appreciate, appreciate the invite today. So uh, as everybody said, I'm Joe. I'm with One Main Financial. If you, hopefully you've heard of us, but we're, we're sort of committed to improving the financial well-being of really all the hardworking Americans through responsible lending. And at One Main, I'm the Associate Director of Cybersecurity Awareness, uh, essentially tasked with helping to manage the human risk at the company. And so the program is focused on embedding a security mindset into the company culture, and the security education and awareness efforts that we that we shared in this task force are really focused on behavior, or in other words, how to motivate our team members to move beyond awareness 
to action uh, when it comes to all things cybersecurity. Uh, great. I think you've done some uh, amazing work with regard to really uh, looking at metrics and, and helping drive behavior and, and develop actions to improve behavior. So we'll talk about those today. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, our team member panelists will delightfully interrupt me as I go along here, but uh, toward the end, we'll talk about uh, one of the challenges we all have, and that is increasing engagement amongst our constituents. That's always a challenge, but we have some good ideas we'll share uh, with members today. And just to let you know, uh, for those that are members of the collaborative, the presentation and the other materials uh, will be posted uh, on the uh, member portal. For those uh, who are our guests here today, uh, we'll have a, an email link that you can uh, uh, write to, and then we can send you a copy of this presentation. So uh, don't worry so much about taking a lot of notes. Um, let me just, first of all, I have to introduce the Cybersecurity Collaborative as a an entity and concept and what we're all about and the value that we provide for cybersecurity leaders. We are a vendor, vendor independent organization. Uh, we're, we're not um, sponsoring any vendor, receiving any contributions uh, from any vendor or uh, advocating for any particular vendors. Although we do talk about, and, and vendor is a tough name, uh, people don't like it, but I mean, uh, companies providing tools and security services is a better way to say that. Uh, we do talk about those companies, members share uh, the pluses and minuses of using these, their tools and systems. And that's one of the benefits is to, is to, you know, if people are having issues with configuring a tool or how to use it, uh, they have other members to kind of tell them how they solve the problem. But my point is uh, we, we, are, uh, we are agnostic of anyone uh, trying to sell security uh, tools and services. What we are about is sharing best practices and materials. Um, we believe that um, no matter what company you belong to, uh, you'll have an idea that will resonate with another member. Uh, you can collaborate with another member and actually help, help uh, improve the security posture of that other member. And, th and the way we do that is uh, pr principally through task forces which are geared toward various security subjects. This one, of course, is security awareness and training. Uh, and I'm gonna go through some of the others that we are having this year, but we've had them on third party incident management and on DevOps and on ransomware. And through those sessions, there are about eight or 10 sessions, uh, we, we interact, we share our presentations and ideas. And at the end of it, we put together generally guidance documents and other tools and materials that we can share with other members of the collaborative. Um, this, is, this group is both for CISOs and, and staff of CISOs. One of the challenges that we always have is I, I, I really don't have time for this. You know, this is going to sink up more time. I'd like to contribute, uh, but I have to, I have to say um, from a CISO standpoint, um, the CISO can spend as much time as he or she wants to do this. And we've had CISOs on the call here that really interact. But for the CISO, um, you wake up in the morning seeing the daily morning security report, major security news, you're never blindsided. You can reach out to other CISOs. And there are a few topics that really uh, we, we focus on for CISOs, like C CISO boardrooms. Uh, once a month, we'll have an hour meeting on a particular topic. And we're moving into um, you know, CISOs presenting to boards and the challenges behind that. And we're looking at helping CISOs uh, work through those processes, which are very time consuming and also nerve wracking. So, so for the CISOs, there are definitely interactions with other CISOs that, that help you develop. But also for the staff of CISOs, these task forces, for example, on this one, particularly security awareness, and we do have CISOs on this as well, um, staff members, you know, are involved in this and they share their ideas and they gain ideas from other members. And again, uh, if, if they have security certifications, they can use this time to fulfill the 40 hour requirements uh, that are required for doing that. So, so what you do when you join is you give your staff members opportunity to get best practices from other members in one hour meetings a week and to reach out independently to do that. So that's, that's really what we're about. And our premise is the value of sharing with our peers. 
and the benefit of best practices and tools from that sharing. So let me anyway get into the virtual briefing topics today. We'll give you a little background on the task force. We put together a, a task force guidance document uh, uh, for, for the members of the collaborative. Uh, the topics we'll talk about security awareness, education, and training more important than ever. Uh, I've been in this business a long time and uh, I, I think I've killed a lot of people with PowerPoint presentations, hopefully not the audience here. That's, uh, you know, I, I learned from this team that we need to move beyond that. It isn't that the, the presentations are, are not useful in the right context, but what we're doing in security education is more important than ever. It's beyond the annual training to phishing training and specialized training. And we'll talk a little bit about why it's more important than ever. But um, to look at this again, get beyond the idea of how am I gonna present to someone. If you have a security education training program, it, it is a program consisting of several components. We call it six and six. There are really six essential components you have to really say that your organization has a, a training program. The other is there are components that increase effectiveness. Make, make you more effective in changing the behaviors of your training constituents so that there are fewer incidents, fewer clicking e uh, phishing emails, et cetera, clicking on phishing emails. Well, and then we'll talk about guidance on some of the initiatives that we're going in today. Uh, our members will go in, you know, how have they increased engagement? Um, that's a big challenge for you, not just on phishing exercises, but certainly in annual awareness training or in factory environments. So what, what have members done to do that? Remember, you're vying for people's time and you want that time to be used very effectively. And then we're gonna talk about um, not only the guidance document that this task force put together, two other um, supporting deliverables. One is the Security Awareness Education Training Metrics Workbook. We're starting here with security awareness and we're gonna build that workbook with other disciplines like incident management, et cetera, as we go along through the year. But I wanna share the, the outline of what that looks like uh, with you today. And then also there's a, a, an education training uh, visuals deck. Members here provided some input to that. We'll talk about that as well. Summary and task force next steps. Uh, we will conclude with our task force plan. Uh, so you know what we're gonna be doing for the remainder of the year. And there'll be time for a Q and A at the end, uh, you know, 10 minutes before. Connor will give you a poll question we ask you to fill out. So briefly, um, the Awareness Education Training Task Force, rep organizations representing different industries and government agencies. Um, we believe there's more value in having multiple industries uh, collaborate uh, than, than simply just doing it industry by industry on, on, on these things, uh, because ideas really uh, do, do change across industry and actually can be used across industry. Uh, members shared successes, false starts, and challenges. Um, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? What, where did I fail? Um, you know, uh, in the uh, boardroom of the security uh, task force with CISOs, it's amazing how open some of the CISOs are about having to face some strange questions they get from their board members and how they had to kind of respond to those things. So the candor is really something we all learn from and the value from collaboration as much as deliverables. I'm just gonna ask any of my panelists here, uh, you know, what, what did you get out of the team and, and, and from collaboration? I, you know, and it's be super specific, but um, what did you find valuable from the collaboration side? Anyone wanna chime in? I'll, I'll start out. Um, my program is, is pretty small. Um, we don't have a lot of resources personnel wise. Um, it's really just me, like I was saying earlier. Um, so for me, it was really um, enlightening to see some of the other programs in place and that there are actual people resources assigned full time to do just this thing, uh, which is exciting to me uh, because it is such a, a needed area. And then there's just the sharing of the ideas among all the members um, I, I actually grabbed a lot of good ideas uh, and have started incorporating some of them already. So for, it, it was valuable for me in that sense. Great, great. And you, and you gave a lot too, as well. Um, anyone else, one more person? <laughs> well, I can say that my, my, my time with this is, you know, I've been doing this for a few years and I thought, 
I thought I had uh, something pretty well under control, but after meeting Andy, I'm like, I seriously have to level up my swag game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I have to say too, you know, uh, you know, trying to liven things up a little bit. We always, I always came out of those meetings feeling uh, uplifted a little bit by, by you and Andy and others. So, <laughs> okay. All right, let me move on. Thank you. Um, the first thing I'll talk about is the guidance document we typically put together at the end of, uh, of these sessions. And uh, this uh, discussion today really mirrors sort of the organization of this document. And we're gonna cover different pieces of it. Not everything, obviously we don't have time, but um, it talks about the importance of, of security, uh, the essential components, the uh, components for increasing effectiveness, and then we break down initiatives. Uh, we call them training programs or initiatives in terms of general areas and then and targeted things. Now, we'll go over the taxonomy today, methods for increasing engagements. We have a few uh, FAQs, and then there's a, an appendix on member use tools. Uh, let me start by um, reminding everyone why this is important. Actually, it's always been an important uh, part of the security program from the beginning. It's been a staple of the information security program. So here are five standards, every one of which has um, something about security. Now ISO 2702 actually gets into more detail on uh, awareness training. Uh, NIST CSF has a category. NIST 853 has uh, incredibly detailed guidance about what you should do. Now, the types of practical exercises you get from being in the collaborative, but the structure is, is very important from this standpoint here. PCI has now evolved to version 4.0. I was involved in the first versions of it, I remember as an assessor. And there might have been only one of these requirements here. Now it's ongoing, formal, 12 months higher, awareness of threats and vulnerabilities, and acceptable use. So it really gets into. Uh, all these different things. And when you're audited, uh, an auditor will go in and say, are doing it. And then CIS also has in its top 18, control number 14. So, uh, so it's a staple, it's in standards and regulations. Um, it's in, also in uh, various privacy, state privacy laws, they call it out specifically. Um, the second thing is uh, the insider threat is, is uh, more and more talked about. And in the 2021 Verizon Data Breach Investigations Report, top five misuses and breaches that come from insiders. And the threat isn't just always malicious, it's, it's unintentional or ill-informed. Privilege abuse, number one, data mishandling, number two, possession and abuse, that's ownership and control of information like cred credentials, unapproved workarounds, uh, so, I got to just send you this social security number and email because I can't get my regular thing to do it. And knowledge abuse, uh, you know, USB drives, clicking on phishing emails, credit card and social security numbers sent unencrypted. Um, so changing that behavior is something that organizations have to do. And they're leveraging this, the skills of the security awareness education team and the tools and venues that they have to do that. Um, and, and it's more and more important. And the biggest thing in the insider threat that this occurred over the last five years is phishing training. Most everyone has know before or fish me or um, you know, PSAT or some other tool uh, that, that, that's doing this. And the security awareness teams are the ones that are kind of uh, pushing that forward as a specific uh, threat uh, to insiders. The other thing is, and it, I just kind of mentioned is ransomware. Uh, we just had a team conclude on that. By the way, that team put together uh, some questionnaires to help companies organize how they should uh, you know, uh, prepare to defend and uh, detect and respond to ransomware events. It's a, it's a pervasive threat with devastating consequences. 69% of all mail, malware last year. And email phishing remains the number one vector. There are other vectors for, for delivering ransomware. But then, then again, the need you know, security awareness training team never had to deal with that until, you know, fairly recent history. So, you know, um, 
it's, it's always been there, a staple, but the insider threat and then other pervasive threats are making this function even more important and the need to change human behavior even more important. Yeah, and, and before we move on uh, real quick, Tom, uh, I'll, I'll throw in a, a, a quick uh, moment here. Uh, of yeah. As we've moved from a compliance-based security program, and I fully agree with the uh, standards and regulations that are on the slide, but we're moving, uh, you know, most programs uh, of people I'm talking to are moving to a risk-based. Uh, and as we start focus on the risks, how do we handle these risks? How do we minimize? How do we mitigate that? Uh, and of course, you know, everyone on the task force was already sold uh, on security awareness and the need for it. But I've talked to other CISOs and they're like, rather than invest in training people, why don't we just spend our money to get better controls? Therefore, it never lands in a person's mailbox. Therefore, they're never going to have to click on it. Don't invest in training your people. Let's go ahead and, you know, again, invest in controls, tools, technology. Uh, and I sit there and I'm like, that's that's not going to get you the results that you're looking for. Uh, we're not just trying to train people just to train people. I know we'll get into some of this in, in you know some of the slides, but really, as we take a look at this from a risk-based perspective, I think we would be foolish to think we don't need to talk to people. We don't need to talk about the pervasiveness of email-borne threats and attacks that are coming in, whether that be insider threats or ransomware. Uh, so even though on the slide, I just wanted to say this is not just from a compliance base, but this truly is as your program evolves and with a risk-based program, this is still a staple. Uh, I, I really appreciate you saying that, and, and I think that's a, a very important point to make. And uh, I, I think ideally we, we want to implement technology where, where we can to avoid mistakes being made. But that said, when we implement new technologies like data tagging using M365, you got to train people to use it properly. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to share a document outside your organization or inside. And I've seen that in organizations. So, so while you know, we're relying on technology to improve the security of, in that case, data handling, um, users have to know how to use the technologies in a way that won't stop the business. Um, and, and so it, it's attendant on that. And I remember you know, uh, when we were talking about a technology team and, and uh, people were, uh, uh, you know, emerging technologies or a, a technology implementation team. The security awareness team was sort of locked in with that team because every time they introduced new, te new technologies, they realized they, they had to deal with potential human error in those things. So, uh, so your point is, yes, risk-based and technology isn't going to remove it all. It may actually help in many ways. But, as, but it, it, at the same time, people have to know how to use them properly. So uh, thanks for sharing that. So I'm just gonna briefly go through the six uh, basic components. Everyone probably expects these anyway and is, is nothing new. And the legal, regulatory, or, or corporate requirement for the program, which we've defined before. Uh, you do need a dedicated team. I, you know, I just trying to get parts of people to do this uh, makes it very hard to do in our experience. Um, budget, definitely a, a dedicated budget. It isn't a budget that as a placeholder to be cut. Uh, I know during the pandemic, there was less travel and, and less awareness, but, if, but, uh, but, you, but you definitely need to have some type of a protected budget around this because it is that important. You need to define initiatives. And there's more than just annual awareness. We'll talk about those. A platform and venue like a learning management system, some way to deliver it. And the last thing is, um, is you do need records. You do need to maintain records of whom you trained, when you train the individuals and how well they did. Um, I've seen uh, SOC 2 type 2 reports where they, they get to the security awareness side and they said, we don't have records for people taking this training. so. We can't validate the control, so it's an exception. And then that becomes a red flag when anyone starts evaluating that. So, so those are kind of the, the basics that everyone uh, should have. But 
things that make it more effect effective are executive endorsement and oversight. And uh, I remember Andy, you know, you've got you've had some great CISOs and you're uh, a, a great new CISO and and uh, one that just left. But having the executives get involved in those in that program made all the difference, you know, in terms of actually being a part of the videos to talk about what's going on. And, and, and uh, so, and, and the oversight is really bringing the metrics into the security steering committees and even into the board role in some, case, uh, in some cases. Um, another thing too, it depends on if you're a public or private company, but independent audit is just mainly just to make sure that um, uh, if there are changes in the organization, that it, it, this is still the control is still there and being properly audited, it, it is an important function. Engagement rewards and reminders. Um, uh, how we're going to talk more about uh, the issue of trying to get members more engaged because how you do that in, greatly increases the effectiveness. But with that comes rewards. Reminders is a nice way to say people that may not have uh, completed training and, and, and escalations. Uh, we have to do this, but there's some some ways that that can be done uh, effectively. Uh, another thing that and, and uh, Bernadette uh, was one who really talked about is, is developing relationships with an organ with other organizations in your company and outside of the company to get input in terms of what behaviors do we need to change. And we'll talk about that in, in the uh, in the next few slides about wh who those organizations are. Uh, briefly, I can say you know the CERT team. A threat intelligence team, what threats are we seeing, um, you know, the audit. Um, so two others are metrics and scorecards. Uh, I'm going to go over our, our metrics, the way, you know, the visuals and how we are now beginning to define them. This will slide you'll see later. Uh, but there's a scorecard on, uh, on human behaviors uh, that was developed. Uh, Joe uh, put this together, a, a really really amazing kind of presentation uh, using using uh, metrics and visualizations to help drive uh, support for the program and also changes uh, to human behavior. So that's number five. And the last one here, which is which is important, I'm going to go through this quickly and you'll all have this on the slide. You need to think of this as a continuous input and feedback process. Um, this isn't a one and done once a year kind of thing. Uh, this is ongoing, which is all the more important why you need a dedicated team. You can't do it on a part-time basis and be effective. And we've talked about different input sources, but there's threat intelligence, the vulnerability management team, incident management team, audit, human resources, legal, policies, executives. They're going to provide inputs to your program. Like, what are the key threats? Obviously, ransomware being one of them. You know, are we patching vulnerabilities properly? What what types of incidents are we seeing? You know, uh, well, we're seeing a lot of uh, downloading on USB devices, for example. What are our key audit findings? Um, what security policy violations have occurred, et cetera? And with that, you are going to set up some objectives for your program, uh, which you can measure some of them. Do you want to increase the awareness of new threats, improve annual awareness training completion? reduce events and incidents, reduce audit findings, you know, set some goals. And when you have these objectives too, and you have to report to management, you kind of give credence to your, your program. And then um, out of that, you're really going to create your initiatives, the different types of training. And we, we have two broad categories of general training and targeted training, which we're seeing more and more in this organization to focus on a specific group or a specific uh, threat. Um, and those will be delivered through various platforms and venues um, to constituents, which are employees, contractors, managers, functional units. Key things for the feedback are what kind of training feedback are you getting uh, from the people? Did they find it valuable? Are they doing well in completing it? And the last thing on that too is, uh, is assessments. So uh, you want to assess against your objectives and how well you did. Are you seeing actually better patching or reduced audit findings and so forth? You want to tie it into um, your organizational objectives as, as much as possible. That it isn't just a thing, that, a compliance thing, but a risk-based thing has been rightfully uh, brought to the fore here. 
Um, so let me kind of move on quickly so we can get into some more discussion. We basically um, uh, categorized uh, the initiatives into general security awareness initiatives like annual training, onboarding training, campaigns, outreach, cybersecurity awareness month, periodic communications, and then the targeted training like phishing, data handling, secure coding in high risk areas, and then training uh, for business units. So you really are um, not just doing the general types of things, but you have to really define your programs to you know, talk, talk about data handling, like you're introducing M365, uh, you know, you as a team can help actually bring in uh, two uh, members, how they can properly tag and, and, and handle data. And uh, basically I'm just gonna say, uh, I'm not gonna go through this in detail, it's too much information tonight, but in our guidance document, uh, we do describe uh, each of the initiatives um, you know, why is it required? What is its sources of information? What subjects are involved? Platforms and venues, technologies, consultants are being considered. And also we do provide member guidance on these as well. So in this case, um, members talk about games and puzzles using escape room, games of thrones, Net Netflix style videos. And this is for annual awareness. It's not that just used to be delivered mainly through PowerPoint. Members are being more innovative and we'll talk through those a little bit more. Um, and then um, the rest of it is we do have uh, guidance on frequently asked questions. We talk about how do you implement this in multinational organizations? How do I organize and staff the program? We had some lengthy discussions about staff qualities. What type of individual do you want working on your team? Um, and they're not, uh, it, we, the interesting conclusion was it's not necessarily someone who is a uh, security analyst in, in the SOC environment, um, or even someone that has had 20 years in security, um, someone who has security knowledge or can learn it, who has good outreach and interpersonal skills with, with other folks. And one of the, the, the great uh, findings here was that there were some teachers on the team, that, you know, former teachers who were able to leverage those skills uh, to bring, uh, you know, security awareness uh, to their constituents in a very, very effective way. And the last thing is how do I acquire a sufficient budget? And uh, some of that is really look, looking at uh, risk-based kinds of things. And there's an appendix um, where we discuss tools used by members. Here's, here's um, how not to increase engagement. Um, and this was an actual thing. Uh, this was a, a PowerPoint that someone had to do for a, an hour long uh, annual awareness presentation. And uh, this was a slide that was, was thrown up. Uh, luckily, my slides are almost not as bad, <laughs> but, um, the, the, you know, someone wanted to cram in as much as they could in an hour, so they crammed it on a Microsoft uh, PowerPoint in kind of, in this kind of fashion as an actual slide. And uh, it's very difficult for someone trying to consume this and, uh, and, and understand how I need to improve my passwords when I get, when I get done with this. They're exhausted. So, um, it, it's, it's not the way you necessarily want to go uh, about, about doing it. Uh, we all make the mistakes of, of having done that. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do in the next slide is uh, talk right now and introduce the task force members to talk about their ways uh, for increasing engagement. And I'll just bring up a couple of things here and please chime in. One thing I found on the, the task force was, was to develop a consistent theme or slogan. And Andy, I think you did, right? It was like be the shield or, and then you had shield the fork. Shield the fork, yes. Um, don't be the target, be the shield is our slogan at Rockwell Automation. Um, our, our CISO would say it at every single webinar, at every video recording in our newsletters. Um, we had that slogan in our signatures. So that was one way to blast it enterprise-wide. Um, whenever they heard, don't be the target, be the shield, they knew it was us. Whenever they saw our shield, um, they knew this was coming from the security team. Our swag had the shield. Um, that will go a long way in, in knowing not um, the department of no, but the department to know, K-N-O-W. That, that's, that was great. I think you brought that up. And I'm just going to piggyback a little bit on what you were saying. 
you communicate this always, the theme on presentations, communications, platform, physical objects, like mentioned like coffee mugs. Uh, don't go out and buy a lot of food. We, we, we know the problem with that, right? And I, I think you, you, may, you mentioned that except for the cocoa bombs. I thought that was an interesting idea. Um, yeah, for the swag, I, I typically do not um, get anything that's disposable like food. Um, that's a one and done. So you want to use, a, I, I'll tell you a, a thing. This is hand sanitizer. And when I purchased it in 2018, my leadership said, who wants hand sanitizer? Well, by golly, who didn't want hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer these last few years? And our sub be the shield. Um, what an awesome swag item that people reuse over and over and over. So you, when you get swag, you, you want to be thinking about those things, but you know, someone put in the chat a question, like, what if I don't have a budget? What if I don't have a dedicated team? You don't need a budget. Um, start with, start with your resources that you do have. You have an internal communications team, make someone a champion. Uh, if you have someone from legal HR, get some champions from each department. And now they're your liaisons, um, partner with them. Um, the budget, you don't need a budget. So I, I purchase uh, with money. I purchase swag once a year, but you know, I, prior to being at Rockwell Automation, I was in healthcare and there was no budget. We were putting the money into equipment that would save someone's life. They weren't giving Andy Kittleson money to reward someone for uh, security and training, but people want recognition. So whether that's an email to that individual and including all of their leaders on it, um, or it's a certificate, we, we make certificates and send up people love the recognition. Um, if your company has an internal Bravo or, or some type of form, you don't have to have a monetary value on it. Uh, it, it could be something just as simple as sending out an email and including their whole team on it and making them a big deal, putting their name out on your, your internal um, web page or your intranet, your SharePoint page, whatever, and drawing attention to them, putting them on Yammer, um, make them a big deal and, and good news travels fast and, and that, in, that increases your engagement. I think you brought up an excellent point too, because we, we did, you know, it, it's nice to have a budget and, and uh, one would want that as much as you can get it and you, you, you should advocate it. But in, in Andy's case, um, you found ways to get around it to, in order to get the message out there because it was that important to do. And I think one of the, the key insights here is, yeah, designated champion, uh, you know, work with someone to, to be an advocate and, and at least have them share their time with you and then direct them on doing that and develop that like interfunctional organization. You, you can do that. And, and as long as you get the executives to sort of support that, uh, you, you can go forward. And you're right. When you don't have a budget, the money, you find some other ways and, and recognition can, can simply be an email to, to the manager of someone, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I get not having a budget. I, I work for some small companies that we did not have budgets. And there is so much material uh, that you can get your hands on that it's just going to be, you know, sweat of your brow uh, putting it together. Uh, I like to be the CPE uh, cut and paste engineer, uh, put it together, deliver it, very low cost. Uh, I'm not able to get the swag uh, to, you know, things that everybody wants to be able to put that mouse pad, who uses a mouse pad anymore anyways, uh, but put that on everybody's desk, uh, putting up signs and posters. Uh, I, you know, those should still be uh, cheap enough that uh, you can print some things off, uh, put those in some break rooms, uh, you know, having that consistent theme. But then I also like uh, keeping a theme or timely and relevant uh, during tax season, making sure that people understand this is coming now. Uh, so having that relevant theme, but, you know, even going back to, uh, uh, you know, I, I think it's actually going to be the next, the, the next bullet, Tom. Um, if you go to that yeah. next bullet, it's going to be, how do we, the, the why, how do we make people understand this? We want a behavior change. If you can help up to understand how this is going to work in their personal life, not just their professional life, I think that is going to be a home run as well. So help them understand that we're trying to educate you to take care of yourself, not just to protect the company. 
I am doing it to protect the company, but I'm trying to protect the person as well. And the things you're learning on how to protect your information is also going to be relevant of how you protect your personal account, your bank account, your, you know, your kids, how you can educate them. I'm trying to make it relevant to the person, not to just to the company. Uh, you know, this is very interesting. So you're all, you're all here. I mean, you've kind of uh, developed your programs into, you know, spectacular, very engaging things. But the interesting thing here is, and it maybe maybe them them across when we started out our discussion of this, you, you started with what you had, right? I mean, and you and you got success with that, and you you built up and that then you were able to get more support budget etc so to the person who asked that question you know i think it's a very valid question uh you get some good ideas uh borrow sources from cisa you know use what you can use and yes powerpoint because that's what you have but as you do that uh, and have success with it and members see the value of the organization you'll be able to do more things um, because they'll see it as being valuable. So uh, that was an excellent question. And, and even, you know, with it, all the answers from this team, I think bringing it in, you know, we found out if you're trying to educate and train people about protecting company data, uh, and I think, you know, they're concerned about protecting their identity at home and their kids being on the internet and so forth. And if you start helping them do that, they get the security principles that then they can apply back in, in the in the office. They find it more relevant. I think that's a, a great raise to bring it into the home. And then um, just one thing, the the uh, uh, shield to fork thing. I just this I found this very interesting. It goes back to Andy a little bit. And uh, you know your recipe cookbook, right? Uh, online that everyone kind of contributed recipes, but you they when they looked at these recipes, they sort of got the security theme and messages as part of it, right? So that's the advertising a little bit for it. But uh, but people got involved and, and then they, uh, by getting involved, they were able to learn without having it just be a big deck thrown in front of them and, you know, turn the clock on for an hour. Yeah, so Tom, um, the shield to fork. So for the folks on the call, you know, every year I try to think of what's something that everybody has in common that we're all, that we all have to do. And, and then how can I embed the security message into it? And I thought, you know, the last couple of years have been kind of rough for everybody around the world, um, no matter what fashion you look into. And so that was something positive. Well, something we all have in common, no matter um, where you come from, your walk of life, we all need food. And we all have memories around the table at celebrations and, uh, you know, what, whatnot. You can think back to a party and you hear your favorite voice laugh and you smell the foods. And so I thought, let's do a cookbook. And so, again, um, Be the Shield is our slogan. So we did Shield to Fork and we cast uh, a, a call for recipes from our employees and they submitted them. Um, we had over 100 recipes submitted globally, we put together the cookbook, and then we embedded security messages, you know, something cheesy, like, do you have that great grandmother's recipe that's under lock and key with a secret ingredient? So should your password. And it's just a little twist where now you're in your kitchen, looking at the recipes, and you're cooking, and you're getting the security message within the cook, or the, the um, recipe book. And then you sit down to the dinner table, and your kids or spouses or parents say, wow, this is great, or this is terrible. Where did you get it? Make this again, don't make this again. You say, oh, it's from the security cookbook. You're talking about it at home. And at, at Rockwell Automation, we always try to give tools to folks so they can be the CISO at home. And when you empower people with those security resources on a personal level, you know, to tap on with what Ben was saying, they'll bring those behaviors to the workplace. And if someone put in the, in the um, Q and A, do you think we should use FUD to get these folks to be compliant? Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because another way to increase engagement, um, we have a Rockwell band uh, research. I'm sure there are some band nerds in your organization that that do it on the side. Ask them, hey, will you cover a song? So last October for Cybersecurity Awareness Month, um, our slogan was, "There's a lot of FUD out there." 
but don't worry, we're gonna give you the tools and resources that you need to be cyber safe. And it was Don't Stop Believing. And um, our band did a cover of Journey's song. And so every time we kicked off a webinar, um, instead of, you know, the, the moderator comes on and says, thanks for joining. We'll get started in just a few minutes. No, we didn't do that. We played the music and then we had like advertising of upcoming events that we had, where to go for the Aware Force newsletter or where to go for our internal SharePoint page. Um, you know, all of that stuff. The song was like two and a half minutes. It was perfect. And then on we went. And I challenge anybody on this call not to have Don't Stop Believing stuck in your head. And you're going to think of Andy Kittleson's Cybersecurity Awareness Program the rest of the day. You're welcome. <laughs> so uh, we're happy to uh, rent out at a modest fee, all the panelists, to anyone who's not a part of the collaborative, but we actually want you to join. And uh, you, you get the advantage of this as part of being a member. Let me move on. We're, we're kind of, uh, thank you, Andy, for that. I appreciate it. Um, I think to go along with make training fun and positive, and uh, you, you beat me to my next point. Uh, I hear, I forget, I say, remember, I do, and I understand. And, uh, you know, sensory learning, and, and we have some slides from you on that, it's important. Bringing outside speakers who are well known in the field, the, you know, as you, you did before. Um, and that's what we're, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about next steps from this team. Um, CISA and NIST provide some good materials and guidance. Uh, recognize and reward individuals for participating, uh, doing well in training. Recognition, um, and it's always been a case, even in the quality movement way back, was almost more important than money. I think it depends on what you get paid, of course, but, <laughs> but um, it's, it's extremely important. And this is a great way to increase engagement. So um, let me move on. Uh, in another five minutes, we're gonna do a poll and then I wanna get back to the questions. Um, we are putting together um, an, uh, an awareness education training metrics workbook. And uh, the way we like to visualize these metrics is um, there are goal-oriented monitoring and diagnostic types of members. Uh, we're, we're going to put this in an Excel, but it's actually, we're gonna develop a, a user tool that members can go ahead and start entering metrics in and maybe we'll do some benchmarks. And uh, what the way we like to do this, and this is a goal-oriented metrics, is to set a value that you want to achieve over a period of time and see how you're trending. And then uh, this allows you to put in a status every time you review it on a monthly basis and then action items in as well. That's a, it's a nice format that has been used effectively for organizations to try to have a discussion around how do we improve this and what do we need to do? And we're, we're putting in a few metrics for awareness training, but when we have incident management, we're gonna add those and boardroom, we're gonna keep on adding to that. There's another deck that I'd like to say members are putting together and it's really some visuals. And uh, this was contributed by Rockwell, um, it, a lot to what Andy was talking about using sensory, te uh, sensory techniques in awareness to reduce the time from new to review. Um, just some wonderful ideas. There's a whole series of slides around that. And then we got some from um, uh, Bernadette from Booz Allen about, and this is, this is for their internal staff, it's not their consultant side, uh, you know, on how they organize their, their group and how they present their group to the world in a, in a very nice visual, which, uh, which was a good framework for their program. And, and uh, she explains on their slides, and she uses uh, PSAT. We're not advocating that too specifically, but um, that's something that they use quite a bit for their fishing training. Um, and then this is the thing, Joe, that you know I think impressed us all was your work with this human scorecard. Um, something I you know wasn't wasn't even aware of when we were coming into this. And and uh, again, I'm not doing uh, justice to all that you put together. But you actually have a tool that actually looks at certain behaviors and you can measure how well the organization is doing against those behaviors, but you can also break it down to the riskiest individuals, riskiest departments, riskiest locations. So that allows you to provide feedback in, in, in where you need to train. Uh, and, and you did this in a short period of time, as I recall. Uh, I don't know if you have anything to say on it, but I, just some of the visuals are in the deck. Certainly uh, everyone would love to have what you did, but uh, it's, it's just been a, a great thing. Do you have any comments on it? 
No, no I think you, you hit it, uh, and it is visually compelling, and it's nice that we're at a place where I'm working with a provider who has developed a dashboard to do all the algorithms and math for me. But to the earlier point about budgets and personnel and getting started, you often have to start at grassroots. I know, I know programs where there are people doing this in Excel. Oh, okay. but rather than doing nothing, rather than doing nothing, right? They get started as we did, and then over time, you know, the executives start to see the value. And then when budget does come your way, you can you can begin to automate that and turn your attention to other things. Yeah. So I don't want people to think like, well, yeah, you got to go off and hire some vendor to do this. You can start with the you can start with Excel. You know, and yeah, exactly like the metrics too. If you start in Excel, and then you you, you you have to start somewhere and then gain traction. And I think that's important. But this is a, a again a very uh, metrics oriented way to kind of look at how you're doing with, with human behavior. And when we talked about sort of awareness and um, assessment and feedback, this is a, a great means of doing that. But there's some visuals here that One Main Financial has, has contributed that are, are, are really kind of key. Um, so we're, well, let me summarize. And uh, while we're doing this, Connor, if you want to put the poll question up, it's fine. Uh, maybe since we're coming toward the, the top of the hour. Uh, so to summarize uh, this, let me just see where I'm going here. Yeah, if everyone would kindly answer the poll questions that helps us with feedback. An effective security awareness education training program is becoming more important than ever. I think we heard that, that here. Um, uh, let's see, I'm not, oh, here we go. The program requires six components to operate and an additional six components to be effective. I think one of the things though, to modify that is to start somewhere. And, uh, you know, because not everyone has, has had a basis to be able to leverage all those things. And uh, hopefully you've gotten some good ideas just to begin to use what you have uh, to get to, to engage people. And then, and then if you can show that you're doing that and the value to your management and meeting even your compliance requirements and then risk-based kinds of things, it, it, it adds to your willing, their willingness to invest more in this area. Um, security awareness teams must continually find ways to increase engagement with constituents. Um, you're competing for everyone's time and attention. This is the whole nature of business, right? You're always competing for time and attention. It's not that people don't want to be secure or practice security. Most people do, the vast majority. They just see it as, as an added thing that they need to do. And they're, you know, again, if you're in a development organization, you've got a major deliverable due. For clients, and you know, someone says, hey, "You really need to do a scan and fix those vulnerabilities." You want to resist. You say, "I can't make the deadline." But um, again, you're competing for time and attention. Uh, being passionate, believing in it, in outreach, and that's been very much uh, characteristics of all the members of the team is to be passionate, believe in it, and 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 reach out. And people like that when you do it. Um, the last thing I wanted to bring up here. I can get this to go, is next steps for the task force. You know, it was a short task force, about eight to nine meetings. And in those meetings, though, members really shared, I mean, like Joe did and Andy and, and Mike and, uh, you know, Ben showed, you know, showed everything about their programs and, and shared ideas. Uh, we're going to re-engage in August and as a team, and we're going to help prepare, members prepare for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And, uh, we're going to um, look to ways to prepare materials for collaborative members to support their awareness month. So uh, I've talked to Parham about this. We may engage a, a major speaker that we can allow members to invite their staffs to or make a video of. We haven't figured out exactly what that is. Um, this was such a great team. I'd love to have it running all the time, but it's kind of uh, something that's, that's difficult to do. But we are going to re-engage. Um, in, in August. So just briefly, we have a lot of task forces going on this year. Um, security awareness, we just talked about. We're now in the middle of security and the boardroom with a number of top CISOs talking about um, uh, how they are engaging their boardrooms. And we're put, we've developed 10 questions that we're answering for CISOs new in positions or new to their organizations 
on how they should prepare for and engage the board, uh, not just in terms of the content, but you know, meeting with board members. Uh, it talks about what powers do the board really have. The boards really don't, at least in the US, don't have power over budgets. We found that everyone thinks they do, but um, so, so what can you do as a CISO to bring your message and what happens when there's a disconnect between your management and the board? We're addressing all those things. We're starting an incident management team. We're gonna end up with playbooks and tabletop exercises. Security metrics is gonna be all through the year toward the end of the year when we're gonna come up with deliverables. And then uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, uh, finish up, uh, also do identity and access management application security. And the one last thing here is, uh, please join us. We'll let you know for security in the boardroom virtual briefing on June 23. Uh, when we'll have a number of CISOs coming in. So let me just conclude one CPE credit here, uh, please, for your time. Uh, members, the presentation metrics visuals deck will be added to the portal next week. The guidance document is, is just being professionally edited. That takes a little longer. You'll get that as well. Uh, for guests, please contact us for a copy of this presentation for more information about the Cybersecurity Collaborative. Um, are there some more questions we need to address here? Let me see. Um, Well, that's the chat box. Hold on a second, folks. Let me see if I can get a hold of it. Uh, let's see. I mean, uh, I don't know where the uh, chat where the, um, questions are. Can, can any of you read the questions? I'm, I'm not able to see them for some reason. Oh, hold on. There we go. All right. Well, any other questions? <laughs> I think I think Andy uh, answered them all. Yeah, uh, along the way, the questions have been getting answered, so I think we're good. Uh, I, I I think we are too. Maybe 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 we should end on this note. Thank you for. Oh, election related. Wow, had to go there. No, no question. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer that one, but that's all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not good at some of these. That's what else? a whole nother collaborative. For those on the call, someone asked, do you have any election related and or anything election related? And that's why we're laughing. And then they came back and said, sorry. That's a whole nother collaborative, right? Right, Tom? Right, crew? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can, we can, we'll, if you want to talk about setting it up, that's fine. I may be out that day, but, you know, it's okay. <laughs> You know, um, I, I thank you very much for getting some some nice, uh, in, you know, people some compliments. And let me just kind of conclude that, you know, it's, it's really the people on this team that if, you know, I, I just kind of summarize stuff here. Uh, but I have to say, um, you know, I couldn't have done it without uh, people on the team that, that have done this. And, you know, I do encourage people to join here and you're going to get the benefit of their insights. And believe it or not, you'll have some insights for all of us. We always learn some different things. Um, so with that, I think we're going to close out, give you guys a couple minutes back. Thanks again, uh, panelists and executive member here for your great job and time this afternoon. Everyone have a good afternoon and uh, a great weekend coming up too. Thank you so much. <laughs>